Well, hello there, and I do hope you're all well. Now is this obnoxious Tory MP, Sally Ann Hart of Hastings and Rye. Most hilarious rant, really the most embarrassing ever. Now after Chris Bryant got this extreme Brexit Tory goomen, you know, absolutely clutching at their pearls and blubbering away, up steps our Sally Ann Hart to show the reason why this party had gone from, you know, basically two weeks ago, desperately trying to get rid of this lazy toxic squatter to now I to now how this self-entitled prick is the best thing since Bryce for sliced bread and her rant about the opposition is quite funny. Sally Ann Hart. Deputy Speaker. I thank the Prime Minister for his dedication to the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, his aspiration for all in this country and his expectation that we can achieve great things as individuals and as a country. This Conservative government, working as a team, has delivered hundreds of achievements over the past two and a half years. It has delivered and continues to deliver on the people's priorities. Brexit for starters. In March 2020, the country faced an alarming health crisis, the COVID pandemic and something which those opposite have conveniently forgotten about. This government has taken decisive action to shield the public from the worst effects of the pandemic and the war in Ukraine. And it is very easy to criticise, but far, far more difficult to make tough and hard decisions. We have delivered the biggest reforms to our railways in 25 years with simpler, modern fares and reliable services for passengers. We've begun the accessing process to join the comprehensive and progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership, giving UK businesses access to one of the world's largest and most dynamic free trade areas. We hosted COP26 in Glasgow last year, helping to drive ambitious climate change action around the world. And we saw the World Leading Environment Act passed ensuring that the environment is at the heart of this government's agenda. The Agriculture Act, the Police and Crime Sentencing and Courts Act, the Building Safety Act, the Skills and Post-16 Education Act, the Nationality and Borders Bill. We've seen the plan for jobs, upskilling and reskilling and focus on education, giving every pupil in England a funding boost so all children have the same opportunities to succeed. We've invested in levelling up parts of the country that have been long overlooked and neglected, yeah. including the levelling up fund and the towns fund deals. Yeah. Hastings received 24 point million, leveraging another 85 million in private sector funding. I could go on. <laughs> I'll give way. I'd like to thank the Honourable Lady for giving way on that point. And she mentions the Towns Fund, which is, uh, would she agree with me, is going to transform and regenerate, regenerate the towns and cities that have been left behind by the Labour in the past. Yeah. 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 I, thank, I thank my Honourable Friend for his intervention and completely agree with him. This is why the previous Conservative government had the Northern Powerhouse Absolutely. to try and lift yeah. those people left behind for generations by the Labour Party. Yeah. Yeah. It is a fundamental principle of our constitution that any government must retain the confidence of the legislature, that is us. The Conservative Party won an 80-seat majority. We may have slightly reduced that majority now, but this government operates effectively as votes on legislation in the last couple of weeks alone prove. Healthy majority votes in favour of the government, backing the government. The Prime Minister may have lost the personal confidence of some of his MPs, but he has not lost the legislature mandate. I pity those on the opposition benches. They have resorted to the petty low of personality politics because they have nothing else. So with this Prime Minister gone, what will they do? We can feel their panic seeping across the room. Their hate-fuelled, moralistic posturing has made them all vulnerable. This government continues to function as a strong team 
and I have full confidence in it to deliver the priorities of the people and businesses living in my constituency as well as, 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 well as the country. This on this side of the House. We keep calm and we carry on in the British world. Could have picked a lot of these Tory MPs, but you know, selling their souls. But you know, I'd be here till next year, spouting their undying love for a crime prime criminal prime minister, should I say, who clearly doesn't care about anybody else but himself. And they all knew about what this liar was all about when they were desperate for him to take over their their party and uh, become prime minister. And now they're selling their souls again. Uh, souls again in a desperate attempt you know to for what seems like to me to just stave off a general election and the only reason why i picked this was because the uh, last bit about the opposition party i just thought was absolutely bonkers also the clearly staged will you, will you give away my right of a friend and uh, yes i will give away my right of a friend bit that was just clearly set at one i just couldn't stop laughing because i just thought they were both about as subtle as a cockroach on a white rug it was just hilariously funny <laughs> but anyway what do you guys think what was that the most embarrassing rant you've ever heard well i just thought it was hilariously funny but what do you expect from a bodge sycophant right i shall leave the video here and until the next time i shall bid you farewell and um take care